So ladies and gentlemen, followers of our channel know this well because I'm a big fan of him. Lawrence Harvey, I consider one of the most underrated actors of all time. But a lot of the followers of the channel have been questioning how hated he was. Now, there's been published reports over the years that he's probably one of the most hated actors of his generation or at a high level. But nobody can doubt his talent in the Alamo Manchurian Kennedy. Now, according to a very interesting article on BoreHamwoodTimes.com, a UK site, I'm just quoting from him and I backed up his information with a few sources. It seems hard to imagine how somebody can achieve film stardom against a background of public apathy, hatred from co-stars, and terrible reviews. Even more amazing that you could hang it on it for 20 years, but that is what Lawrence Harvey did. Now, born in Lithuania, he came to London at a young age, where he apparently made a living, allegedly, as a rent boy, prior to turning to acting. He began a companion for a leading actor of the 40s and 50s named Eric Portman, and Elstree Street Studios was persuaded to offer him a contract, of course, the Hamburg Studio. Lawrence appeared in the first film to go on the new sound stages in 48, called Man on the Run, and he acted in other uh, Bora Hamwood Studios, including At the Gate, uh, In Innocence in Paris, and Nights in a Round Table at MGM. He later said he tore up his Elstree Street contract, as it was not providing the lifestyle to which he could be accustomed, and he married actress Margaret Leighton, a very controversial uh, duo. In the late 50s, despite being hated by the critics, Lawrence enjoyed a string of hit movies, including Storm Over the Nile, Tree Men in a Boat, and Room at the Top, for which he was nominated for an Oscar. This led to Hollywood movies, including a role opposite John Wayne in The Alamo and Elizabeth Taylor in her Oscar winner, Butterfield Lake. However, acting with Harvey was less than a joy for many of his co-stars, as he later recalled. Jane Fonda once commented, it was like acting by yourself, but worse. Lee Remick remarked, it was a horrendous experience not to be repeated. Now, uh, one uh, critic said, I remember Richard Todd telling me about when they worked together on an Elstree movie called The Long, The Short, and The Tall. He said, Harvey was very unprofessional and difficult to work with. We had a young actor named Richard Harris in the cast, and he was constantly leading him straight. Now, the critics, of course, love to hate him, and uh, his acerbic wit. Joanna Pettit said in published reports, especially in, in that Night Gallery book that uh, uh, was published a few years ago, saying he was uh, acerbic. And if he really liked you, he would do everything for you, but if he despised you, he's going to drive you nuts. Now, um, Todd's comments uh, were backed up by many media, and he said the, the science behind him being so negative had a lot to do with the fact that he knew who, how good he was. Now, how good was Lawrence Harvey? Well, the idea is this. Before Lawrence Harvey uh, came along, the angry young man style that was perfected later on by uh, Richard Harris, Oliver Reed, he pretty well invented that. But you see aspects of when he's acting in the Alamo in the maturing candidate. And later on in Night Gallery, especially the Caterpillar, is, there was always a little bit of tension between he and his fellow actors, be they British or American. I know Angela Lansbury never had anything good or bad to say about him, but the idea is, was Lawrence Harvey as bad as everybody said? Well, he was hard to give along with, and his what he called fuzzy sexuality didn't help. If he was a bisexual man or like what he called gay for pay, that wasn't a big uh, go-to thing until James Dean popularized it after he died. So, but what I want you to do, look at the Manchurian candidate, look at the Alamo, look at his work, Butterfield 8, Room at the, room at the Top. Uh, uh, it's just tremendous. The man chews up scenery. Now, ironically, when he did Night Gallery, he knew he was dying of cancer. And I know when he passed away, half of Hollywood cried, while the other half of Hollywood probably celebrated. That's how polarizing it was. So, ladies and gentlemen, whether you like Lawrence Harvey or not, the movies are there. But I still say he was robbed for uh, by an Oscar for an Oscar for the Manchurian Candidate, and Lansbury was robbed as well. But that that scene where basically Sinatra is showing all the queens mm -hmm. that Sinatra said was the out of focus. That's how much he was a great actor. You couldn't have done the Manchurian Candidate or the Alamo while Lawrence Harvey. He added everything to a role. He didn't take it away from. It. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. If you like what we're doing with our TV columns on vintage movies, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.